What's up? My name is Technobo here for Shoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you the best methods for optimizing Valorant Episode 3 Act 3. If you'd like further Windows optimizations, check the description down below for a 10 and 11 guide, as well as related optimization guides. This one's specifically going to focus on Valorant. So to begin, before we even hop into the game, we need to adjust some settings on Windows and make sure things are running well. First of all, I'd of course recommend that you update Windows and your graphics driver as well. You'll find links in the description down below for downloads for each of those. Simply download the latest drivers, install them, and then do a Windows update. After you've updated and restarted, come back to this video here. Next up, we need to locate where Valorant is installed. If you know where it is, great, navigate across to it. Otherwise, if you don't, open up your file explorer with start and E, and when you're on the this PC screen, we'll be searching for Valorant. .exe and hit enter. Upon doing so, it'll look through all of the disks on your computer looking for Valorant. When Valorant finally shows up on this list, locate Valorant Win64 Shipping.exe, right click, and then click Open File Location. Now I'll be in the game's install directory, Valorant Live Shooter Game Binaries Win64, and we'll be looking at Valorant Win64 Shipping.exe. All you have to do is right click this, then click Properties. Inside of this window, we'll be heading across to compatibility and we'll simply disable full screen optimizations. If you're running a super low end computer or you start receiving mouse issues after this, you may want to uncheck this. So I'll check this to enable it and click apply. Then head into change high DPI settings. And in here, I'll be checking this option down here to override high DPI scaling, set it to application, okay, apply, okay, and we're done here. Now I'll leave this window open while we open up the settings window. I'll hit start, type in GPU, and open up graphics settings. Now, inside of here, make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on, and in this graphics performance preference section over here, simply select a desktop app from the drop down here, and then click browse. Now, we'll be navigating across to where the game is located. If you are like me and you kept that window open, you can click at the very top, copy, and then paste it in up here, hit enter to navigate directly across to it. Then you'll see Valorant Win64 Shipping.exe, which I'll select, and then click Add. Now it'll show up on the list. Click Options and change it to High Performance, then click Save. This will get it to run on the best GPU in our computer, which is especially important if you're running a gaming laptop or notebook. Now, without closing this window, I'll head back twice, so back and then home, and I'll head into the Gaming section. In here, under the Xbox Game Bar, I'll turn this off. You'll also turn this off unless you explicitly use this and the features it provides. On the Game Mode tab on the side, make sure that this is turned on for a couple extra FPS. Now we can close out of the settings window entirely. Now let's get to cleaning up our file system. Hit Start and type in Cleanup, where we'll be opening Disk Cleanup as Administrator. Upon doing so, select the drive with Windows on it, C Drive, OK, and wait for the scan to complete. This will check your computer for any junk files that it can delete. Usually I'll have absolutely everything checked except for a cycle bin and thumbnails as you may have files you want to restore in the recycle bin which this program will clear out if checked and the thumbnails down here take a while to generate from the thousands of images I have so I leave this unchecked as well. This program will clear our temporary folder as well as Windows Update Cleanup etc etc. Simply click OK, delete files and wait for this to run through to completion. Upon completion, we'll hit start, type in cleanup once more, run it as admin. This time we'll be heading into the drive where Valorant is installed, though of course you can skip this step if you have it on C drive. For me, it's on E drive, so I'll select it, OK, and once again select everything here, and then OK once again. Though do keep in mind, if you ever had recycle bin unchecked like me, make sure to go through the recycle bin now and empty it, i.e. delete everything after you've restored the files you may need. Now, a couple of extra tips which will obviously help with performance is to make sure that you have absolutely minimal programs running on your computer. I'll open Task Manager with Control Shift and Escape. And on the Processes tab, you can simply run through everything and make sure everything you don't need running is closed. On the Startup tab at the very top, you'll see a whole bunch of programs here. Sort by status, and you'll see all of the enabled programs, then the disabled programs. The enabled programs are programs that start up with your computer whenever you boot into it, which will raise the time that it takes you to log into your computer. And of course, more programs running in the background means that there'll be fewer resources for your game to actually use. So simply right click on any program you don't want running and click disable. Make sure you keep this list as minimal as possible while still keeping the programs you use hourly enabled, of course, if you want them running in the background. 
If you'd like, you can get really advanced and on the services tab, click open services and you can sort by startup type here where everything automatic starts up when your computer starts up. And of course you can customize this to your heart's content. Sandboxy is a program that lets you run programs in a sandbox and you may not necessarily want it to start with Windows. You can right click properties and simply set this to manual. That means that this program will have to be started by you and then it will run. It won't automatically start with Windows. Awesome. On top of this, do keep in mind that overlays such as the Discord overlay, Steam overlay and things like that can cause you to lose a couple of FPS, even things like FPS overlays. Having the absolute minimal number of programs running and interacting with your game is the best way to get more FPS. So with the light Windows optimization out of the way, if you'd like more, check the description down below for really in-depth guides on Windows 10 and Windows 11. Let's get into the game for the actual game optimization now. On the main menu, I'll click the settings wheel on the top right followed by settings. Now starting on the video tab, in general there's a couple of settings we need to change here. Display mode should definitely be set to full screen, however it doesn't seem to be too happy with my recording. Take my word, this should be set to full screen. Resolution should match your monitor's resolution, which in my case would be 3440 by 1440, but in your case will more likely be 2560 by 1440 or 1920 by 1080. Whatever your monitor's resolution is, the one that is set on the box, is the one that you should have this set to. You'll also see the default resolution down here. I think this is the issue. It's an ultra wide, not a 4K monitor. Anyways, my issues aside, resolution should be your original resolution for your monitor. Then at the very bottom down here, all of these FPS limiting options should be set to off. Reflex low latency should be turned on. You can try on plus boost, but I don't see too much of a difference. Then we'll head across to the graphics quality section at the very top. Now I'll quickly run through some of the options here. Though of course, if you do like how the game looks with certain options set to higher numbers, then you're more than welcome to customize this afterwards. So multi-threaded rendering should be turned on. Basically, everything else from here should be turned to low. So material quality, low, texture quality, low, detail quality, low, UI quality, low. The texture quality is more reliant on your graphics cards VRAM, and you can turn this up if you have more VRAM in your graphics card. If you don't know, just leave this to low. Otherwise, set this to low, see what kind of FPS you're getting, and then turn it up slowly until you find one that you like. Vignette should be turned off as you'll see more around the corners of your screen. It won't be darkened and VSync should obviously be turned off. This will give you less input latency. You only turn this on if you are getting screen tearing. Anti-aliasing should be turned as low as possible or off. If you absolutely hate jagged edges, you may want to turn this to MSAA 2X, the lowest setting. Anisotropic filtering has almost no effect on your graphics card and you can leave this on 8 or even 16. Improve clarity, I'd recommend having on, as well as experimental sharpening. It may help you see better in game, though of course these are both up to your experience. Then everything else from here should be turned off. Bloom, distortion and cast shadows, these ones will give you better vision in game. Cast shadows may also apply to player models, so you may want to have this on. Then I'll head across to the stats tab at the very top and I'd recommend hiding every one of these as even having an FPS counter using the end game one will drop your FPS quite a bit. If you absolutely need to measure your FPS, use an external program like MSI Afterburner or even Steam's overlay. Then on the audio tab, I'd recommend turning HRTF on as it'll help your positional hearing in game. Closing settings, we're basically done here. So that's really about it for this optimization guide. If you'd like to get more advanced with your NVIDIA graphics card, Windows 10 or Windows 11 optimization, check the description down below for more optimization guides to squeeze even more FPS out of your computer. Of course, if you need somewhere to test your FPS, I'd recommend clicking play, then clicking the practice mode in the bottom left, shooting test or open range, and you'll be able to directly compare your FPS while you're changing the options in game. This will make life a bit simpler for you. But anyways, that's about it. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Vintech, nobody have a troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.